welcome to Marcella's Purse. Today I will be showing you how I made this clutch bag. As you see it has a chain and this detail here is actually a brooch. There's nothing very extravagant about the fabric. In fact, it's only a humble a piece of cotton. It is navy and what I did is to quilt the fabric. You will see more in detail later on in the video. It is as I say, a simple clutch bag with a magnetic snap. I didn't put a pocket inside because I actually wanted for a special occasion I am going to in a couple of weeks and I don't really need a pocket. And the chain is not very long, I just uh, wanted it to go over my arm rather than my shoulder and I can hide it and just use as a clutch. Simple. It's a very basic technique, but uh, I hope it will work for you as an inspiration because you can modify the details in many ways, not only by the front detail, but in the way you use the fabric. And there are many different kinds of threads that you can use. There is a machine embroidery thread, there are metallic finishing threads, and you can change a look or the style of a clutch bag in many ways if you uh, apply those different um, materials. So I just hope that it works as an inspiration I said and you will enjoy watching me making this. Thank you. So I am starting here with the rectangle which measures 19 by uh, 12 inches and it's a simple plain cotton fabric and I put some fusible fleece at the back all over. Now I could have used a, a quilting a wadding material but the reason I didn't is because some years ago I made a mobile phone pouch using that kind of materials and my phone got so hot that I just couldn't really use it. Now I know this is a a clutch bag I want to make, a clutch purse, but I'm sure I will be carrying my phone in, in it, so I don't want any accidents to happen. And I also want to see how this material reacts when quilted. So now I, I can work with this as one piece and I will treat the fabric and I will go, I will bring you to my sewing machine and I'll show you what I will be doing. The first thing I have done in my sewing machine is to lower the teeth. I moved, my machine has a little handle at the back that I can move up and down to make this come down. Now I am taking now the normal foot uh, off and I have to take that part as well off and I am going to install this quilting foot uh, you will have to get, if you don't have one, you will have to get something suitable for your sewing machine. Now that I have installed the quilting foot, I will show you the patterns that I'm thinking of doing. Uh, this is one of the patterns, I just drew some wobbly lines, and that's the second one. But I think I will try to do the very first one. And I am using a, a normal multi-purpose thread. Now at this point you could change the tension of your sewing machine. But it is a small project for me and, and I will keep it as it is. The normal standard tension. And I will work and see what happens. I'm pretty sure it will be okay for what I want to do. Now I did have a, the thread is the same color as the fabric. And I did think that I could probably use a contrasting thread. There are a huge range of materials you can use, even some shiny ones, which I did think, I did consider for a moment. But the occasion I want to use this bag for is it's not, a, it's, a, it's a morning event, so I don't want it to be too glittery. So I will just do this. I will do one first row of this pattern and I see what it looks like. So I am lowering the, the foot 
as you see my fabric moves, moves freely and I will lower the needle there and I will start I'm just going to have a glance at my pattern to remind myself of what I want it to look like and I will start I am here now ready to show you the stitching I did. So uh, I finished the whole piece and um, I have here what would be the lining of the bag and it is the same fabric, the same color and I put uh, some fusible foam at the back and um, I did that because if I fold this you will see that it's very soft and um, I want this, I wanted to have a bit more firmness, to be more sturdy. So I put the fusible f uh, foam and I left the margin around the edges so when I stitch everything together I don't have too much bulk around the seams. And my seam allowance is a quarter of an inch or half a centimeter. I did double check that the piece I stitched, uh, I quilted, is still the same, is still a square. Because sometimes when you sew, when you do this kind of stitching, the, the whole piece shrinks. So double check your measurements and make sure that the whole piece is square. And they are now both the same size. So I then um, play with my fabric and I folded it. I didn't take any major measurements, I just eyeballed it at the size I wanted. So you can choose whatever size you want to make your purse. So I decided that this should be a good size for the flap. And you can see these white lines here, it is chalk, because I cut a piece of paper of the size of this potential flap. I folded it in half and just by hand I drew this curve because I want my flap to have this shape. So I put those pins there on each side to make sure that I don't lose. <laughs> I'm not taking any measurements because I don't want to confuse you. I'm just showing you a, a way of making things. And so there it is. Now in the same way I am going to take the lining and I'm going to place the, this pattern, this will be the part that will be the flap and I will draw uh, the shape that I want and I will just uh, cut the shape with the scissors so they are both the same size and shape. Now that both my pieces have been rounded I am going to take the main fabric and I am going to fold it to where I put the marks earlier with the pins which is about six and a half inches or sixteen and a half centimeters there and I shall put a, a pin on each side but I also want to uh, mark where my magnetic snap will go So if I measure the width, it measures uh, 11 and a half inches, just over 29 centimeters. So um, my magnet should come to about 5 inches and 3 quarters, which is about 14 and a half centimeters. That's my middle point. I think that position is good and from the top down it measures three inches which is about seven and a half centimeters so i will attach the magnet now so that will be easier and uh, i have them here i normally like to reinforce the fabric where i attach the magnetic snap but in this case i will not do it because it already has this interfacing this stabilizer. 
So I'm going to take one of the parts of the snap and taking this little ring, placing the little ring in the middle point that I mark and then marking where the the legs of the snap should go. Can you see? I did the marks for this. Now using a seam ripper or a small pair of scissors I will cut the slit there very gently making sure I don't hurt myself. Just a small opening on each side and then I can push this little leg through and they will come on the other side there. Now I shall put this ring through and I shall use the back of my scissors to push each leg down. Some people push them down towards the inside and others push them open towards the outside like a wing. I don't think it makes much difference. I have done them both ways but this is my favorite. Now if you want you can uh, stick a piece of cut a square of fusible um, interfacing and stick it on top of the cylinder, this uh, circle, so you prevent these little flaps to get to catch on the fabric and avoid ripping. But um, I don't think it will be necessary this time. But just something that you might want to consider at some point. Right, so we have this. And uh, we have to work now with the same but on the lining. Now uh, the lining will go like this, so we're folding it towards the right side, like so. Again, uh, six and a half inches, because we need to attach the, the other part of the magnetic snap. Now, um, we fold this over. I am feeling with my finger where the snap is. I'm marking there. That's where my I can feel the snap there. So that is, if I put it the right size together, making sure that everything matches, I shall get the a pin and I will find where I did the mark here. There it is. So I'm going to center everything properly, all the edges, making sure I don't move my pin and I shall stop the lining with this pin <laughs> and then I shall move it back and there I can see where my what my magnetic snap should go. Okay? So likewise I shall get the corresponding pieces. Take this one and do the marks. Putting the legs through. Yeah. There and here's my ring. There. Right. Now, my next thing to do is to teach this lining and uh, I will simply start stitching from 
the top here to the bottom and here to the bottom on this side. Here's my lining. Now I have this chain that I want to attach to the bag. You see it has these clippy things, hooks at the end. It's a short chain, I didn't want a very long one. Um, but of course it needs something to clip onto inside the lining. So I have this navy ribbon and I am going to use this one. The other option should be that with the same fabric you might, uh, could make a little tab so you make it into a ribbon uh, about this width, a, about just over a quarter of an inch and um, it should be you know wide enough and strong enough to for you to clip this to your handbag to your purse now I am going to cut uh, I wanted to go if I show you on the outside, side uh, I wanted about this length yeah about two inches four centimeters so if I fold it in half I shall have two pieces of that length and um, I don't want it to show uh, when I'm using the handbag so if I fold it in half like so I shall put a pin momentarily I need to decide how far down I want it to go so if we consider again that we're going to be losing about a quarter of an inch when we attach the pieces together I shall put this down a bit so if I attach it somewhere so that the loop, the fold there comes uh, no higher than a quarter of an inch or half a centimeter I will be happy with that because when I clip it in uh, and I'm using it over the shoulder this ribbon won't, will not show Turn it, actually shall turn it inside out or right side out I should say and I shall find a point if I move it down at about there and can you see the seam if I pin this to the seam I will keep it in place for this demonstration now can you see the row end I will fold it perhaps this is too long I can trim it off so I'm going to fold this towards the inside and this so I don't have a raw edges at the end of the ribbon that might start fraying now um, if this is too fiddly uh, to do to sew don't hesitate to use um, glue fabric glue you can use something like this which is the normal white glue or I think I'm going to use this one because uh, it's not as liquid as that one and it dries very quickly and I only need a little bit to keep this in place so I will uh, apply a dollop just a little drop there just to make it tacky enough so I can fold these pieces so I'm folding it in. I should put another dollop there. This is very sticky so I don't need to use a big amount. So that will keep my pieces there um, together and uh, for a bit and then I, I will do the same on the other side and that will create a loop and now that these two pieces are together there I will be able to sew them in place better more easily without using many pins I will just get on the way as I sew I had to remove the the white part of the arm of the sewing machine to be able to fit this through but I managed to, to stitch it and putting the glue on it really helped keeping the ribbon in place and that's the other one so I turn it um, outside out, inside out again and um, 
I am just trimming this thread and we now uh, have to remove these pins now and uh, actually uh, stitch the the main part of the, the main fabric as we did with the lining. So I will do that. I have stitched the main fabric removing the pins that I had in position. So as I did with the lining I sew along. So I'm going to turn it right side out, poking the corners out. And at this time you can think of any decoration you might want to add to your clutch bag. So when the clutch closes like this, don't worry it's looking funny there but it will be okay in a bit. <laughs> At this point, when you haven't assembled everything yet, you might want to add an extra decoration. Uh, some years ago, I bought um, a couple of brooches. I actually, uh, they were for gift. I bought one for myself and one for a friend. And she very proudly one day showed me that she had made her own clutch bag, which was also navy, and she used the brooch to decorate it. So I am going to do the same. Now, Sometimes in the past I have used even earrings, some bits and pieces that you see, you can collect as you go along and someday you use them and you could remove this part and sew it in place depending on what kind of brooch it is. But because I use this as a brooch, I'm just going to use it, clip it on at the back uh, when I am using, using this bag so I can still have it, keep it as a brooch. So that's my thing. Now we're going to take now uh, the main fabric and put it inside the lining so that we have the right sides of both fabrics touching. We're going to Pin all the edges, making sure that everything matches neatly. And we're going to sew along. Here at the front as well, but we're going to make sure, that, again, make sure that everything is really neatly placed and pinned. And we're going to start sewing from around here. We're going to sew along here up to the stitching and we will continue sewing around, along, around this bit here. We will come back and we will finish around here. We will leave this gap so that we can turn the bag inside out. So I will do that. I have sewn around there and at the front and I snips around the here on the round part so I can turn this inside out putting my hand through the gap left and gently bring the, the right side out also when you do the stitching make sure you don't catch the ribbons that you put on the side nearly done. Working the corners inside so they go well inside to keep the shape of the bag. And what is taking shape. So what um, I am going to do now is uh, I am going to put more pins. I shall use clips. I shall use clips for a moment. And I am going to clip around or pin around because we're going to top stitch along the round shape there and at the front and as customarily we're going to fold the, the raw edges towards the inside, inside like so 
we will pin in place again and when we do the top stitching along here we will be closing that gap so make sure that um, you pin this well in position because you don't want the lining to show like this you want you want it like this so I am putting pins I shall pin securely and I will do the stitching I did the top stitching I attached I clipped the chain on both sides I ironed the whole thing I'm going to put the chain inside I iron it well on both sides and now la pieza de resistencia or piece of resistance veamos, let's see if this looks okay about the middle there now we'll close it and we have a clutch bag do you like it? what do you think? and I like that it's much sturdier with the fusible foam that I used in the lining and if I want to cut it over my shoulder you see you don't even see the brooch on the other side uh, there's the chain I'm quite pleased with that so I hope you have enjoyed this, remember this, I didn't give you um, dimensions or full details of materials because it's a demonstration and you can adapt it with what we have done before. You have all the information to create your own design. So see you soon. Thank you for being here. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye.